Hello, I'm James Harrison and I'm in front of this glorious Batman and I'm going to give you a whole show tour of Woodland Park School show 2019. And uh, here I have David with me, who's the um, president of the club. Yeah, hi, I'm David. I'm the president of All Blocks Lego User Group, and we're fundraising for the school today in this um, Lego show. And also, you have a Lego Ideas, a set on Lego Ideas. I do have a set on Lego Ideas. We'll come to that as we do the tour around the around the show. Yeah. So if we start here, we have what we have here. Um, Vaughan Block, one of our um, major collector of Lego has collected all of these really old shop display sets. We're going to see a few of them as we go through, but these 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 models were used in shop displays in the 1970s perhaps, and he's got a he's obtained quite a quite a cool collection of these of these uh, models that are that are really old. And I also see here of uh, some of the parts of Lego from the 1950s and also all those That's right. This is this is quite a famous Lego set that came out in 1958 um, when Lego's patent was first developed. And and yeah, you can see the the, the family member back there in the in the photograph on the box. Yes. Now if we move on, we start seeing the first minifigure. That's right, they, they came out in the 70s, they didn't have any arms or hands, they were just um, um, static figures. Yes. Yeah. And now we move on, we have something that they don't use in Lego now, they use the tails of the horses. Oh, okay, I see that. Well, that would be considered an illegal um, way of assembling the Lego. You see how there's a, a tile that's been stuck vertically between two studs. They don't allow that anymore. That's called an illegal construction technique. Yeah. And now as we move on, we finally get to the family sets. I remember these in the early 70s. My sister had one of these sets um, with these maxi figures, these um, brick built figurines. I'll just pick this person up here. And you can see, you can see that they've got these articulated pieces, which is their arms. And they've got a, a, a stud for the hand on their big big face. Yep. And they um, also use the minifigure for the baby. And, and I think if you look here, there's a minifigure that's a doll for the child in the child children's child's bedroom. Yes. Um, there's a little minifigure there in the in the trolley or the pram. Yes. So they, when these maxi figures were around, they were they were at the same time that the minifigures came out as well. Yeah, and I also see that now we're moving on to uh, carousel, and I think this was motorised. Yeah, that's another shop display that was motorised. I'm not sure whether it runs now or not, but um, but yeah. Yes, I think he told me that it was going to run. It, okay, that's cool. We might see that later on. Yeah, and now we move on to a pelican that I think is not going to run. That's another shop display. That I think when it was running that the beak would open and close and the wings would flap. Yes. But again, these models are really old. They're, they're nearly 40, 50 years old. And now we move on to Friends. This is um, Sue's display. She's put together a, a Friends set. Um, and she's quite creative in, in what she's trying to show us here. Yes, and... There's also Lego. It's a mixture of Lego City as well. Okay, yeah. The thing that the thing that she's that Sue's using in her display is new sort of polystyrene um, uh, base placemats. Yeah. Uh, there's a name for them. I forget what they're called, but you can bu you buy them, and they they sort of link together using using bricks to connect them. Yes. They're a lot cheaper than the base plates. And also there's a construction here. And there's a yeah, city police scene um, with some robbers. And we've got a construction site um, going on here as well. Yes. And now that finishes up this section. And then we spin around. We see, we'll start over here first, which is, um, I think this is Planet of the Apes. Yes, and it's also a part. This is this is a scene from Planet of the Apes. This is um, Chris's display. 
Uh, Do you think you can give us a quick overview about what this is? Sure, this is the final scene from the movie Planet of the Apes from the, uh, the 70s. Um, some people may recognise the Statue of Liberty there, so um, if you haven't seen the movie, this may give away the ending slightly, so spoiler alert, um, I probably should have said that at the beginning. <laughs> and they used this as part of the Lego Movie 2, the Apocalypse Berg was um, the movie reference for Apocalypse Bird was the, the final scene of Planet of the Apes. Well, wow. that's something we must learn. Up here we've got a cemetery with a whole lot of stuff going on. I've called it a very busy night in Bricktown Cemetery. And we've got Voldemort and Harry Potter um, having their battle. We've got Scooby-Doo um, finding something mysterious. We've got ghosts. We've got Beetlejuice. We've got the X-Files, and we've got Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And watching it all as a werewolf who's just having a cuppa, watching what's going to unfold. Yeah. And then over here we've got some, some Star Wars scenes. They've never done a Battle of Geonosis set. Um, yes. They keep bringing out the same sets over and over. I don't know why they don't like the, um, the Battle of Geonosis, but I've made a big mock, um, my own creation. Yes. Um, just displaying when the Jedi's finally come and all um, have a big battle with the droids. Yes, and also there's... And the, the Star Wars Cantina is a real favourite for, for um, a lot of LEGO fans of Star Wars because of all the really cool minifigures you can get um, that um, are all the different, different aliens and the bands and you've got um, a whole lot of stuff. I've hidden in the background here in some secret rooms that um, in the back of the Star Wars we've got Buzz Lightyear having a drink with um, uh, Benny from the Lego movie and also one of the little aliens from Toy Story and in this room we've got Ming the Merciless from the Flash Gordon movie having having a drink with a Dalek so um, we don't know that didn't happen in the um, Star Wars cantina because we never got to see in the back room so that's what I like to imagine was going on well thank you we'll be moving on now now here are some ultimate collectors sets I think they are some of them yes yes, yes. yes. some of them are yep yeah. yes these these bigger ones with the plaques yes uh, the Ewok village is a uh, UCF as well the Death Star Fire Fighter the Sand Crawler they're all the largest sort of sets yeah yeah and also you have the biggest set that Lego has created yes and I'm giving it a new um, a new staff if you like. A couple of new pilots, because if you look closely, you'll see that um, old Han Solo and uh, Chewie have actually got themselves a new whip. Yep. So I'm finding a new, a new set of pilots for the Falcon at the moment. <laughs> yes. What would be your favourite set out of all of these? Can you guess? This. The one that took me the longest, the one that kept me out of trouble for the longest. Um, it took me about a week to build when I was building it every day. Okay. But yeah, it's definitely, I mean, the Ewok Village was really cool to put together as well because it's different, it's not just grey, you know, that's, that's the thing with a lot of these sets is they're just grey. Um, but the ones with a bit more colour, you know, like the, uh, obviously the, the pod races and the, the ghost, uh, Ewok yeah. Village, these ones are all really cool to build, but no, I, I love the Star Wars stuff. Yep, and you've also added Benny's spaceship. That's right, that's right, that's my, um, my hidden ship of the day, <laughs> although it's not very hidden, so it's the ship that doesn't belong. Yes. As you can see, it's got a, uh, a new pilot as well. Well, thank you. Hey, thank you. No problem. We have some more warships from oh. episode one. Now we move on to Top Brick, which is also Top Gear in Lego. Yeah, this is Lisa's display. Um, she's put together a Top Brick scene, um, reminiscent of the Top Gear TV show. You can see them sitting there in the background uh, with the audience. And they've got the um, capture of the, they have a, a challenge every every TV show of who can drive a, a lap the fastest. So she's got all of the people in their, in their score times yes. there. Yes. Uh, it's quite impressive. There's an awful lot of detail in this display. And you've got to spend quite a bit of time looking at each individual element. Because Lisa puts an awful lot of um, imagination into how she produces her displays. We've got, we've got these cars in a race going around the racetrack. There's a um, uh, sort of a theme park, family, family scene in the centre with a skate park and um, the tents, the campground. We've got Doctor Who's um, TARDIS. TARDIS. 
um, there's a space port, um, there's, a, there's, an, there's a airfield with aeroplanes flying over, so there's an awful lot of happening yes, in this scene. And also the hop creature. Oh yes, okay, I didn't recognise that. Okay. Yes. So maybe as you come around this side, you'll be able to see, see if you can capture sort of a close-up of the top brick scene that's happening in there. And now next we have Lego owls and a mixture, mixture of Minecraft and parking. Again, this is Lisa's display and she's put together an awful lot of um, themes into, fused into one display. There's Minecraft, as you've mentioned, um, there's elves, um, we might need some help. There's Wizard like, of Oz. Wizard of Oz, come and have a look at this. There's a few Wizard of Oz's here today. Yeah, that's certainly a very popular um, custom minifigure uh, theme that's come out recently. But I don't think we're going to get it through because it is Ultra Kitty. Oh, okay. That's pretty scary, Ultra Kitty. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And now, also, you can see a few Easter eggs of Benny's friends and him. Yeah. Yes, the spaceships. And also a lot of dragons. Yeah. Yes. And also there's a pod racer, I've noticed. Yeah. Now, next, I think, um, this is um, NX display. Uh, again, it's a lot of uh, friends being put together. There's a um, Paradiso Park. Yep, and I've also noticed um, Lucy on a banana boat. You, oh, wow, okay. You usually don't really see that. Again, with these displays, you've got to spend quite a bit of time looking at all the detail because there's so much stuff that you'll otherwise miss. We've got um, another Wizard of the Oz theme yes. with um, Dorothy and the Scarecrow and the... And the uh, princesses on trade. And we've also got... I think that's a competition of all the, um, all the minifigures. There's two of each, also, okay. I've noticed. All right. Yeah, and they've also got some people uh, taking a photo, and I think it's just a party. Right? Yes. It's cool with Uni Kitty in the background, and the, yes. there's a disc jockey. Yes. And now we have a collection of the Lego City over the years. Yeah. yeah I think this has been, people have been collecting this for four years. And um, you can also see the newest set, which is. Um, the burnt building, and also I feel sorry for ben, Benny's friends. This is a, yeah, this is a collection from Ryan. He's he's gathered together all these fire trucks. There's a fire boat. Um, there's a there's a rib on the back of a trailer of a truck. There's the there's the extension ladder um, fire truck. Another boat. Fire chief motorcycles. Look at all. Of this. If there's a fire in this in this uh, Lego show today, we've got the crew to put the fire out. It's quite impressive there when you look at it. Yes. The fire station in the background. Oh look, there's, there is a fire going on. Maybe they have to put that one out. Look at all the characters crying out for help in the top of the building. Yes. And now next we have this massive train around Slash yeah. City. Yeah. Yes, and I've also noticed yeah, this is one of the first times I've seen the mini figure shark eater. Yeah. You usually get those in pirate sets, but you also see those in some videos. Right? And people will be thinking, how do you get that? Well, you probably should just go into Bricklink. Yeah. Okay. And also the train layout has up and yeah, we have the, the train station. Arkham Asylum is the, is the train stop where there's people trying to get out of the asylum and catch the train. What a scary thought that would be. Yes. The Sports. Oh yeah, that's right. How, where, 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 what era are these from? I think they're from the early 2000s. Are they? Yes. I can't. I, I know about them, but I don't know how they... Yeah. And also next we have a collection of trains. Of, um, put Jacob's on. Trains yeah. here. You, can not, you also see the original model from non-Lego and real Lego. Same as the Emerald, I think that is, and the new Lego. 
He said you also see Hogwarts Express and the new city train and the Christmas train. And if you move on, you come to this massive castle uh, display. Right. Anything you want to add, David? Um, this is this is a, a Collins display with his big castle. Um, he's got two competing ar armies. You've got the invading army coming up towards the castle, and then you've got the castle occupants defending their their uh, their property. Um, it's quite an impressive display. There's again, there's a lot of detail in in here. Um, Benny's in the castle helping defend um, defend for the. For the Attackers. Yes, and I've also noticed um, the giant crocodile from uh, Batman is down there as well. Oh wow, okay. Um, yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think behind us is um, Slap Duplo Slash. Um, yes. Um, here we have um, David's Rubik's Cube Solver, which it's quite amazing. This isn't this isn't my design. I've just copied it from the internet. There's a there's a website called Mindcuber where you can get the instructions and the programming for this. The the, the Rubik's Cube Solver is made from one set, the EV3 robotic set. And you just mess up a Rubik's Cube and you put it in the tray and it automatically solves the cube on it. It's not very fast, it's not not the fastest cube solver around, but at the moment it's um, sensing all the colours and then it's going to stop and think about it and then it's going to solve it. It takes about two minutes. Well, I think that's it for the show. So thank you, David, and we'll probably see you later. Okay, thanks a lot.